Hello everybody, it is Brian for GadgetUnit.com and in this video it's time for episode 61 of my question and answer series. So first with the channel update, as you can tell by the title of this video, um, basically the amount of videos that I'm going to upload, they're, they're going to decrease because basically I don't have that much stuff to make videos on other than the classic gameplay series and a couple of small pro uh, products that I still have. And that's pretty much it. So things are going to slow down than what they were recently. So that's basically it with the channel update. So on to the Q&A. Plenty of comments for this video because last week I took off because I was away. So from Mark Jeff 222 will you use iOS 7 Beta 4 again? No, I'm not because Beta 4 and Beta 5 have issues where you'll get a full signal, even in places where you would never get a full signal before. And since I'm still testing T-Mobile, that's something I can't really deal with if, since I'm having to compare signal strengths and things. So, I mean, where I had two bars, I then had five with both Beta 4 and Beta 5. So obviously those are some issues. Next up from Live Tech Australia, thoughts of the Moto X and where to get a good prepaid 3G or 4G SIM card in the USA. So regarding the Moto X, here it is. I think that in terms of design, the back looks nice. It's curved a little bit, so it's more ergonomic. It feels better to hold in your hand. Um, I wish they kind of did a better job photoshopping this because you can still see that the rocks right around the phone are still clear. And then after that, everything is blurred out, so they didn't really get close to the phone enough, I think. Um, but the front of the phone, to me, especially the white one. This is absolutely disgusting. This is the, the worst smartphone design I've ever seen. You have this little black blob to the left of the earpiece with the front-facing camera way over here. This is, it just throws everything off. The front of the white Moto X is ugly. Then you have this dot at the bottom for some reason. I'm assuming that's the microphone. That's usually on the bottom of the phone. So I think that the design of the white Moto X is very disgusting. And then you have the frame around the white glass, and that's more of a creamier shade of white. So it's not pure white like the actual glass itself. So it just looks faded and ugly. So in terms of design, okay, here's a much better shot, actually. It really shows off the ugliness, in my opinion. So the frame... Oh, I, I don't know. I think I went on enough about that. But the black one, though, looks much nicer because you don't see a lot of that other stuff. It looks more natural, I think. In terms of specs, it's okay. Um, you would expect a 1080p display and a quad-core processor rather than a dual-core. So you can see that it uses a dual-core processor and your typical quad-core graphics processor. Um, Considering this phone is 199 on contract, that's a bit of a disappointment because that's really not the standard specs nowadays for Android smartphones. You would want a quad-core processor, 1080p display. Those things are pretty much the standard nowadays, and it's a little bit disappointing to see Motorola skip out on that. So that's the Moto X. In regards to the prepaid cards, we talked about this privately via Twitter direct messages, but... What I told LiveTech Australia was that T-Mobile's prepaid plans are pretty good. There are plenty of AT&T MVNOs like H2O that offer some pretty good deals as well. Um, in terms of phone compatibility, I think the AT&T route would be a little bit better. If you use an iPhone, that would also be the case because you would have to get the uh, updated iPhone 5 North American GSM model that supports AT&T and T-Mobile properly. <clears throat> so it's a little bit confusing here and there, but there are just so many different choices to choose from. From Megakev321, do you think that iOS 7 is good? Yes, I do. I mean, I think it's much more modern and much new, newer. It's what iOS 7 needs. It's what Apple needs. They need something different, and iOS 7 delivers that. Um, the icons... That's really the only pain point in my opinion. Everything else about iOS 7 I like. Some of the icons are just ugly. I don't like the uh, music icon. To me it's too pink. It needs to be more of a reddish like this part of the photos icon. 
the game center icon it, it, it doesn't mean anything okay you have four colored bubbles I mean how does that relate to gaming uh, Safari I think that if this was inverted so that it would have a blue background and maybe a white dial here for the compass it would be a little better um, that's pretty much it in regards to the icons but I really do like iOS 7 it's fresh it's modern it adds a lot of must or much needed features especially control center and an updated multitasking method there's just a lot to like about iOS 7 um, I'd be on it right now if it weren't for those signal bugs that I mentioned earlier hopefully beta 6 next week fixes these and uh, I'll go ahead and try that out but I really do like iOS 7 from David Lombardo, what do you think about the Google Chromecast? It's an alternative to the Apple TV, or would it be, or any other solution to have a Plex client on the TV without plugging in my Mac in and out? Um, in regards to Plex, I'm not sure, but in regards to Chromecast versus the Apple TV, the Chromecast, it's still too early, I think. Although the main difference with this versus the Apple TV is that the Apple TV, you can stream anything you want to it. Anything on your Mac, you could stream to your Apple TV through display mirroring. Uh, you could also do your iOS devices as well. So there's no limit to what you can stream to the Apple TV. Whereas with the Chromecast, you're limited to the applications that actually support it. This is one third the price though. So, you know, you do have a couple of things to consider. I would personally pick the Apple TV because it's more clean, it does more, and, uh, you know, Especially once you jailbreak it, you have a lot of other opportunities to do certain media-related tasks. And it looks nicer, of course. So from Cool Tiger Dude, do you wear a watch? Yes, I do, and it actually took me quite a while to find it, so that's not it. This is it. Uh, here it is on Invicta's website. So it is the Pro Diver series. Um, I don't know why it took such a long time to find this, but it took me about 20 minutes to find it. Um, but this is it. I've had this for, I think, a couple of years now, and it, it looks nice, it works well, and, you know, it's a watch, so there's not really too much to say about it. And next up from XX, I'm so boss XX, can you upload a tutorial on how to unjailbreak 6.1.2? Okay, all you have to do is. <clears throat> excuse me, click on the restore button inside of iTunes and that's it. You are unjailbroken. From Radcell8, what is something productive to do in the summer? I feel so useless and hopeless right now. Well, I mean, students typically use the summer to relax, take some time off from schoolwork and things like that. So to me, that would be normal. But if you must do things, volunteer somewhere, get a summer job, part-time job doing stuff, I don't know. There are a lot of things to do, I think. Jared71, the Moto X came out and the design and hardware are spot on. I do disagree on the design still and on the hardware front. However, the price and the specs of the phone aren't the best. And like I said earlier, the specs don't match the price, especially the unsubsidized price. You could get much more powerful smartphones for the same price. Of course, specs don't mean too much to a lot of people, but to me it does. If I'm going to spend $200 on a subsidized smartphone, I would definitely want something that's as fast as it can be. And that's not the Moto X. From Sid Hearthner, whom do you think should make the next Nexus phone? Um, so we've already gone through HTC, LG, and Samsung. Maybe Asus, because they have their pad phone and some of their other ones. I think Google might give them a chance. From Jordan Farrington, do you have a girlfriend? Not at the moment, perhaps sometime this semester, you know, we'll see. From Corollos iHelp 101, what do you think of the Canon 1100D DSLR, which is also called the EOS Rebel T3? I don't know, I've never used a DSLR, so I have no idea what to tell you. Um, the best thing to do is to basically read reviews, to see how well it works compared to other cameras, if it's fast, how well it takes photos and videos, of course. I don't really have anything to tell you, unfortunately. Um, skip that one. 
from Jordan Farrington. What is the best and most practical gaming PC for under $500, give or take about $50? Also, what is a good monitor to use with the PC for primarily gaming? So I pieced together a build. I don't have the list anywhere anymore. I don't know where it went, but $500, that's really pushing it. If you would bring your budget up to $750, you can really do a lot more with your money. You could get so much more performance and value just by bringing up bringing your budget up by $250. So if you bring it up to 750, you you would just get more much more performance for your money. So that's what I would easily recommend you do. $500 sounds a lot nicer compared to $750, but practically speaking, 750 is a much more practical way to go. Lastly, from the Ultimate Tech Channel, not a question, but he says, thanks for the free logo, bro, because I mentioned that he pr pretty much stole the, the Tech Era's logo, which I have no problem with because, number one, I'm no longer affiliated with the Tech Era, and number two, anybody with Photoshop could take three seconds to make it because this little thing here, the globe, comes included as a brush inside of Photoshop. In fact, I'll show it to you. So here is the PSD that he pretty much stole. I still have all of the files related to the tech era. And here is the shape right here. So if you go down to this button, go to custom shape tool, you can click this and somewhere is the globe right here. It's the very last one for me. And that's pretty much it. So, I mean, anybody can make it. It's nothing special. I just wish that he would have at least changed the colors because it's too obvious of where he took it from. Anyway, that's it with episode 61 of the question and answer series. If you have any questions that you would like me to try and answer, go ahead and leave those down below in the comments area. Otherwise, that's it with the video. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll talk to you all whenever I upload the next video.